the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 31st day of this conference, Destroy the Destroyer. Today is supposed to be the last day, but um, the Holy Spirit has asked me to uh, add something more. So uh, the discussions will go on for a couple of days and then we'll round up this conference. When you are working with the Holy Spirit, you need to allow yourself to be flexible so that the Holy Spirit can do as it wills. So we'll add a couple more days and then we'll round up the conference. So yesterday we, we started looking at some of the new strategies that Satan is using now against you and I. Let's continue from where we left off. Number three. Dream life and installation of evil authors to sustain and to sponsor negative patterns. Dream life. An installation of evil authors to sponsor and to sustain negative patterns. So all of a sudden, people go to sleep. A woman goes to sleep. A man goes to sleep. Uh, look, wait. Let me tell you. Eh? If God is not the last thing on your mind as you go to bed, you are under attack. No, let me even ask. Do you know the time you sleep? When you are going to bed, do you know the time you sleep? Some, some of you allow sleep to just come and catch you like a thief. Sleep is not a friend. Though. Sleep is an enemy. If you don't know what I'm telling you, the brother of sleep is death. They come from the same mother. So don't let sleep come and be taking you like a thief. Prepare to sleep. When you are ready to sleep, put your phones aside. Put them on silent. If, if you want to put your light off, put it off. Pull your, your cloth or whatever it is over you and tell yourself, myself, I'm coming to sleep. And let God be the last thing on your mind before you go to bed. You know, psychologists say that there is a thin line between consciousness and unconsciousness. There is a thin line between wakefulness and when you go to sleep. And that thin line, that thin line between when you move into sleep, your spirit man is open, your subconscious is open. And anything you think about would, would take a strong hold as far as your spirit is concerned. So if you think about God doing those moments, what you are doing is that you are injecting God into your system. That is what you are doing. So if God is not the last thing you think about before you go to bed, you are under attack. And if God is not the first thing that comes to mind when your eyes open on your bed, you are under attack. Because sleep is not a friendly. Because when you sleep, all kinds of union can happen in your dream life while you are asleep. All kinds of things can happen in your dream life. So if you go to bed with God as the last thing on your mind, you are entering your dream dimensions with the power and the spirit of God. And whatever comes, you can deal with it you can, you can pray from your dreams. You can deal with issues from your dreams before you even wake up. So this man gets up. This woman gets up. All of a sudden, the man gets married and he becomes impotent because he has some funny dream. A woman cannot conceive. And we cannot see that the offspring of the woman is under attack. Jesus explained something in the parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 43. He stated that a man sowed good wheat in his field. Good wheat in his field. And one night... When everyone was asleep, in the night, when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. And when the plants grew, the weeds also showed up. Then the workers realized that something else was growing. So they came to report to the owner of the farm, the observation. And the owner of the farm said, ah, I knew it. It is an enemy who has done this to me. However, he encouraged the workers to leave them to grow together. Let them grow together. Because in the bid to pull out the weeds, they might end up pulling out some of the weeds. To say, let them grow until harvest time and they will collect the weeds and will burn them look let's read scriptures with understanding you know can you begin to understand why god is allowing this offspring of satan to continue growing with us humans so while men slept while women slept another being holding evil seeds and waiting for the night to fall came under the cover of darkness to sow seeds and went away so let god be the last thing you think about before you go to bed so that when you go to bed and in your dream life those enemies come to sow seeds. You can fight them from your dream life before you even wake up. Is it possible that the devil has come to plant weeds among your wheat, hence your struggle? Is it possible that the devil has come to plant weeds among your wheat, hence your struggle? Take note of both seeds grew. They look the same. Offspring of Satan and offspring of the woman, they look the same. What I've been telling you that there are some people who walk among us, they look like us, but they are not part of us. It is only with time and discernment that you see the differences. Look, listen when I tell you that when humans sleep in the night on planet Earth, 
there are some entities not that they come from pluto they come from the spirit realms they move around and they enter the dream life of people they enter into the life of people's spaces people's workplaces people's cars people's houses they come physically and spiritually and try to sow evil seeds that will destroy the offspring of the woman that will destroy you they do not come to discuss or negotiate they just come to sow evil seeds and they walk away let us be spiritually intelligent too. let us be intelligent they come to sow and they walk away sleep dream life and installation of evil authors to sponsor and sustain negative parties i don't even want to begin to talk about the issue of authors evil authors and good authors because if i start now i won't finish so the holy spirit has asked me to rerun a reloaded version of the altar conference again so watch out for that before the year ends look our generation eh, if we do not have spiritual intelligence we are in trouble we are fighting a battle that we are not even aware of so okay let's take it that uh, let's take it that i come from a place uh, with all of those demonic nonsenses for instance and all of a sudden i realized that the precious blood was shed for me and i begin to stand in the name of jesus christ and i, I begin to legislate i begin to prophesy i begin to pray with understanding and faith using the blood of jesus now remember and this is a punchline demons are not like men they don't have short memory they remember everything they remember the battle on the cross they remember the drama in hell it is as clear as yesterday before them what jesus did is very clear to them that's why they will prefer that you take every other thing serious with the exception of your spiritual life so when you begin to bleed the blood that means that you begin to call the price the price that was paid for your freedom you begin to invoke the mercy of god i told you that when you invoke the blood you are invoking the mercy of god and once you invoke the mercy of god the mercy of god overrides everything else and look at what jesus did on the cross and god comes through for you you see eh? and this is where the relevance of taking the communion comes in this is where the relevance of taking the communion comes in there is a reason why jesus asks us to enact and reenact the last supper and take communion as often as we can and let me explain to you why scripture says that anytime we take up the bread which is a type of his body and drink the wine which is a type of his blood we are in communion with christ you know what it means to be in communion with christ to be in communion with christ means that you have surrendered all you have taken your you have given your will to christ and once your will is united with christ anything that fights you is fighting against christ and there is nothing that can fight christ and win listen up when we take the body and blood of jesus in the communion we are not just satisfying some hang out we are re-enacting a revelation and tapping into a powerful revelation how do i explain this pardon me this may not be a perfect example but suffice me to say suffice me to use it you see the way the people at the other side they offer sacrifices again and again to remind the small gods that they are still loyal to them and that their land and properties and all that they have still belongs to their gods eh? you see the way the people at the other side they, they, they offer sacrifices every now and then to remind the small gods that they are still loyal to them and that their land and properties and all that they have belongs to those small gods. Every time you and I take the body of Christ, which most of us call communion, we are not only surrendering to God, but we are speaking to the gates of the spirit world and saying, Look, they watch us well. Oh. They watch us well. Make one and no mess plus us. You don't want to mess with us oh, because we are still one with Christ. And this is the proof. The proof that we are eating of his body and drinking of his blood. So we are the boss. We are the champions. We are on the winning side. And Jesus is the winner man. And we are on the winning team. So you don't want to mess with us. That's the punchline. That every time you and I take the body and blood of Christ, which most of us call communion, we are not only surrendering to God, but we are speaking to the gates of the spirit world and telling them to look at us well. They shouldn't mess with us. Because we are one with Christ, we are in communion with Christ, and the proof is this, that we are eating of his body and drinking his blood. So they cannot go ahead and sacrifice whatever they want to sacrifice to their small gods and oracles, but we are the masters, we, we are the champions, we, we, we have dominion because of what Jesus did on the cross. We are the movers and the shakers. Do you now see the importance and the relevance of communion? Look, I beg you in the name of God's spirit, whichever church you attend, eh, don't miss communion for anything, your church. Don't miss communion for anything. Whether whether you are you are a Protestant, whether you are a, the church that you attend, don't miss communion for anything. If you are not a communicant, work around it and start going for communion. Because every time you take the communion, you are sending a powerful message across to the spirit realms. Every time you take it with understanding and faith, let me add that 
with understanding and with faith anytime you take it with understanding and with faith you are sending a powerful message across to the spirit realms that you are still one with christ and this is the proof that you are eating of his body and drinking of his blood so taking the holy communion means that because of what christ did on the cross we have access to the life of god another punchline because of what christ did on the cross you and i have access to the life of god the life of god which powers living things don't forget when we were running teachers to pray conference you said our father our father in heaven he is the source and he is the sustainer so taking the communion means that because of what christ did on the cross we have access to the life of god because the life of god powers everything and this life of god is in the body and blood of christ when we take it and the life of god becomes part of our inheritance and this life of god can close every door of sickness it can break evil altars it can break all negativities it can silence the voice of the accuser it can bring down every demon it can destroy every destroyer it can destroy every witchcraft it can bring evil down to its knees and it can give us strength and power to move through the trials and the vicissitudes of life this life of god would help us to destroy the destroyer and this life of god that we take in the holy communion can open every kind of legal door that the devil has closed it can bring restoration to us the blood of Christ, the life of God working through what you see as bread and wine, but in essence, is the body and blood of Jesus is made possible with faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I prophesy into your life, tap into these dimensions and receive all the, the graces and the healing that comes with the Holy Communion. Just like the same way the Holy Spirit made the way Jesus become flesh by overshadowing Mary, the Holy Spirit comes and turns this bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. Because with God, all things are possible. I hear people, they are like, ah, how is it possible that uh, bread can become the body of Christ and, 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 and wine can become the, 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 the blood of Christ? If you believe that the Holy Spirit can overshadow Mary and Jesus will be born, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. So the Holy Spirit then takes bread and wine and changes it into a spiritual substance, namely the body and blood of Christ, so that the moment you take it, it is not just going to your stomach, because the Bible says the body of Christ, which is the word, is able to go beyond your bones and marrows, and it's a discerner of your thoughts and the intent of your heart. It can purify you, it can purify your conscience, it can bring you grace, peace, and healing. But you need to allow your will, the mystery of the free will. You need to tap into it. It's not automatic. So that when other funny blasts are crying against you and they are saying that you are not supposed to succeed in life. When other funny blasts and covenants are crying against you and saying you are supposed to fail. When other funny blasts are crying against you and saying that you are supposed to suffer because of what your ancestors might have done. That you are supposed to have all kinds of challenges because your so-called ancestors signed a contract with them. When other funny blasts are crying that you are supposed to be a victim and not a victor. That you committed this sin, that sin and that other sin. And the devil begins to say that were you not know, part of those who were sinning, aborting, smoking and doing all of those funny things. The moment he wants to execute judgment, the precious blood of Jesus comes between you and Satan and the evil world. And Jesus says, hey, Satan. Jesus tells Satan, Satan, cease fire. You better cease fire. Get out of this space now. How about the price that was paid? I paid with my own blood. Here is the evidence. I paid with my own blood. I paid with my own blood. And so being the master manipulator that he is, being the master manipulator that he is, Satan wants to work another formula. And the formula is the fourth trick namely ignorance yes ignorance so some of you don't want to learn about spiritual things when you hear about things like this and you shut your ear ignorance so that even though the price has been paid this shameless devil comes to many believers and convinces them not to take spiritual things seriously convinces them that the price has not been paid makes us to intellectualize and rationalize everything away or makes us to believe that the principle to even activate this reality in our life is absent and there are people who don't believe in the communion. There are people who don't believe in the communion. How about the price was paid? And Jesus paid with his own blood. So if things begin to cry against you, remember, Christ has paid the price. Can you tap into the precious blood of Jesus Christ with faith and understanding? Can you? If you can, it will do you a lot of good. For our prayer intentions today, we read from James chapter 4, verse 7, and we use that as our 
basis to pray. It says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The problem is that we people of this modern day want to resist the devil, but we don't want to submit ourselves to God. There must be a submission first. Then you can resist the devil. So pray today that God will grant you the grace to submit yourself to him. Once you submit yourself to God, then you can resist the devil and he will flee. If you have not submitted yourself to God and you are resisting the devil, you are wasting your time. You must first of all submit yourself to God. Then you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. So continue to pray for your own personal intentions as a music minister's minister in the background.
Let us pray. Lord, your word says in James chapter 4 verse 7 that we should submit ourselves to you and then you help us to resist the devil and he will flee from us. Lord, we pray for the grace, the capacity to submit ourselves to you. It is a grace that only you can give. So I commit into your hands all those who have joined in this prayer session that you grant us the grace to submit ourselves to you. Then we can be empowered to resist the devil and he will flee from us. We place our personal intentions before your throne of grace. We ask that you stick close to us and bring answers to all of our prayers. Let your light continue to go before us. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, we ask you to look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, have a prayerful day. Shalom and God bless you.